I am so excited to have Kathy with us today. She's been a host on Cornerstone Network with her husband, Ron Henry. Kathy, welcome hey. back to the set here. It's wonderful <laughs> to be here, but boy, what a difference the set is from when we had Focus 4. Well, let me ask you about that. So you here you are, uh, Ron comes here in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. He had been here before, but he- well, Actually, he we were here in 89. Right. In fact, you, uh, I mean, Ron was involved in the beginnings of his place, one of our programs that we had here. Ron was here prior to that with Rejoice. That's right. The year that you guys went on the air, Ron was pastoring, but he had an idea for a program. He called Russ and Norman and said, I'll do a program for you. And he came every month and you guys taped Rejoice, Rejoice for him. And I used yeah. to tease him that he was the Mr. Rogers of the evangelical world. Oh. I think I know why. Go ahead, tell <laughs> because us. Because he would start and say, today we're going to be learning what was going on in Isaiah, da, 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 da. And he would have on like a sweater or a jacket, and then it would take a commercial break. And when he'd come back, he'd be in a clerical robe. So I said, yeah, you know, right. it was like the Mr. Rogers of the evangelical <laughs> world. So I kind of teased him on that. And then he came here in 88 and started his place in 89. And yeah. then we married late in 89 and uh, started Quick Study, which was Life Lessons in 1990. Well, it was uh, Project 90 well, first, oh, that's right. right. It was Project 90 and yeah. we had a set that was uh, black and white and hot pink. And it was kind of black benches and very straight and no padding. And that was the first Project 90. But there was a reading program. And at the end of the year, we got notice saying we couldn't use that name because right, there was, right. so was we had another, to change So it changes the life lessons. Well, let me ask you about hosting, though, because, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, Ron's the host of Focus 4. It was this mm -hmm. program then. Our flagship program was Focus right. 4. So you're hosting. What was that like, hosting with Ron? Well, you know what? Ron was very comfortable in front of the camera, Tom. But he wasn't. Yes, he was. He, he was more comfortable. comfortable in front of the camera, whereas I like to see a person. Yeah. I want to see eyeballs, you know, and eyebrows and a smile. I want to see your face. <laughs> and he wanted me to be on with him. And I said, honey, I'll do whatever you want, but do I have to be? Like, I don't need to be on TV to get attention. I'm kind of a, you know, I was a teacher and I had a bunch of kids. And so I had a lot going on. But he wanted me here. And I would, you don't know this, I would be in the bathroom until they would be counting down for me to come out because I was so nervous. Really? Oh, I was terrified. And it, it started with my first show, which was back on Project 90, Rock Dilliman and Ron. Yeah. Rock was here. Rock, Ron was here, Rock, Rock was here, Ron, and I'm pastor, here, and there's the camera, the and I'm like this, and I'm watching them talk, and I'm like at a ping pong, you know, or a tennis match. Yeah. And uh, they got into Ezekiel. Okay. And Ron said, oh, isn't this just a great book where God says, oh, Ezekiel, son of dust. And he proceeds to, you know, talk to him. And in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I'm a preacher's kid and a preacher's wife, but that wasn't a book easy for me to read because I never read it as Ezekiel, son of dust. I only expect out of you what I gave you the ability to do, and I'm right here to help you accomplish it. I read it as Ezekiel, you son of dust. Like he was bawling Ezekiel out. I know I should admit that, but you know, as a young Christian, that's where I was. Well, Ron, Ron could do that though. Ron could bring <laughs> out the, the depth. I, I always was amazed whenever he would teach uh, the staff that it was just a, he would take 20 minutes and say more than, it would take me an hour to say that, what he mm -hmm. said in 20 minutes, because he could bring out so much depth. Right, well, so that was an interesting show though, because either Bob or Steve Johnson was behind that camera, and Ron said, baby doll, I can tell you're thinking of something, go ahead and contribute. And I didn't have any desire to contribute that I thought the Lord was <laughs> bawling Ezekiel out. Yeah. And uh, finally, I ended up saying what I was thinking, and both Rock and Ron looked at me like, I was an idiot, really. I mean, I never wanted to come back on TV after that day. I was terrified. But you did. You came well, back on Focus 4. I, I, here's what I prayed. Lord, Ron is a great teacher. I'm a storyteller. And, you know, if you have a purpose for me there that can point others to you alongside with this great guy that you gave me to be a wife to, I'll do it. But, you know, I don't want to be an airhead. I'll, I'll be a bubblehead for Jesus if I have to be, but I don't want to be, you know. And so if there's a purpose for me to be there, and we started doing Focus 4, and you know what? I loved it, Tom. Right. And even today, nine years June, Ron's been in heaven. Even as recently as last week, I got a phone call talking to me about a show they had watched years ago. Well, you know, Ron told me one time, he said that uh, television is a very intimate uh, medium mm -hmm. because you, you connect with the person right in their living room. Right. You're connecting. Did you... I mean, what was your experience that way? Well, I, you know what? I learned to love that box because I watch TV and I mm -hmm. respond to you or whoever's on TV. Right. So I would say, 
hey, if, if this is resonating with you, raise your hand. And Ron would say, Kathy, do you think they're raising their hand? And I'd say, yes, because if I were home and the Holy Spirit was dealing with me, I'd be agreeing with you. So I got real comfortable with it. And, uh, you know, when Ron died, that was, it was funny, I missed it, which I didn't think I ever really had a desire for it, but I missed it because it gave me opportunity to share with others what Jesus was revealing to me. Because, yeah. you know, from birth in him till death, we're growing and we're learning and we're knowing new things. And I, was, I just had a passion that I wanted to share what God was teaching me, not because I thought I knew it all, but because I thought, man, he must be teaching other people this too. Well, that's, that's kind of the power and the fun of television, isn't it? You can reach a wide yeah. range mm -hmm. of people that are just, they've tuned in, so they're already ready to right, listen, right. right? So you're reaching right. this wide range of people. And, you know, you were a teacher, so you already had that. Right, but it was easier to talk to small children than it was to talk to grown-ups, okay. for me anyway. You know, uh, uh. now I just talk, Tom. I think you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I run into people. I'll be at Goodwill, and I will have no makeup on. I will be in a sweatsuit, and somebody will say, Kathy, we haven't seen you in so long. And I think, if I didn't look any better after Linda made me up than I looked right then. I'm sure I'm probably going to run into you at Goodwill some Saturday morning or oh, something. Oh, yeah. I, I believe I'm treasure hunting well. when I'm there. <laughs> Well, you know, what do you see as, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about in our next segment about the, you know, the difficulties that you went through, but uh, with losing Ron, but you're still involved through quick study oh, and yeah. good friends. And, and uh, you know, what do you see TV, uh, what do you see that program doing going forward? Well, you know, technologically, everybody talks about TV isn't going to be here anymore. Well, no, what it is is the way we see TV is going to be different in that it's through a satellite, a cable, an internet or something. I mean, the way we get it. But I, I hope and I believe that there is always going to be a place because there are people who cannot get to church. There are people who don't know the Lord yet. There are people who, uh, for whatever reason, haven't found a church home. And mm -hmm. Christian television has met that need since the beginning of time. I mean, when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. we're talking many years ago, my daddy was a pastor and he'd have to wear a blue shirt because white didn't look good on TV. Okay. And, you know, they made up his, you know, his powder all over him. And he would just preach. That's what Christian TV was. You taped a church service or you taped a sermon. That's yeah. what it was. Um, and even that, there are some of those old shows that I'll go back and watch because well, I like hearing. Power, the power of the gospel there. Exactly. Even, even in, in those primitive, primitive ways. We, but his word, his word, he gave his word to heal us and to save us from our own destruction. Well, let me ask you something. Could you just look into the camera and talk to that one right now that might be watching? You know what? Christian TV is here for you. And sometimes when you turn on the air, you don't even know what you need, but the Holy Spirit knows what you need. Because although I want to help you, I don't know you, but Jesus knows you and God created you. And he can speak to his creation in a way that I won't be able to, Tom won't be able to. But if you say, Lord, what do you have for me? You know my need. In our weakest moment, his power comes down. And through a song or a word or a thought or a feeling, he ministers to you. So I hope today, wherever you are, that what we're talking about will touch something in you that will draw you closer to Jesus. Because every answer you need in life is there for you through the power of his word. Because that's Jesus. That's God talking to us through his word. And every question in life is in between those pages. And I hope that you know that. And if you don't know that, please call into the uh, prayer team here because they'll gladly explain that to you. You know, Tom, it's, it's wonderful to know that I learned scriptures as a little girl that meant one thing to me. Right. And as a teenager, they meant something else. And as a 20 year old, they meant something else. And as a widow, they've meant something else because his word is new and fresh every day to us. Well, that is so good. And he meets us right where oh, we're at, right doesn't he? I mean, we're, again, growing up, mm -hmm. going through various stages of life, God's, through his word and through his spirit, meet us. Well, and you know, I, sometimes I think, how could I be this old in him and not know this yet? And I get kind of down on myself, that's the devil. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is saying, hey, Kathy, come on, get on track. But the devil says, you did too much. You should have known this, what's wrong with you. But you know what it is? The Lord loves us so much that he doesn't reveal to us what we need to know until right when we need to know it. Yeah. And we're ready to learn. Oh, yeah, it. we'd freak out if we knew what we need. Okay. <laughs> we needed to yeah. know way far in mm -hmm. advance. Well, Kathy, we're going to be back with you in a, in okay. a little, little bit. Well, we're back to talk a little bit more with Kathy Hembry. And it's, uh, it's, been, it's been great to hear uh, 
to hear your story. <coughs> it well, has been it's, awesome. It's wonderful to be back with Cornerstone because Ron and I were connected to Cornerstone <coughs> since the beginning. You know, when, when uh, okay, let's pray it out. Amy, cough it, get one big cough out. Go ahead. <coughs> there we go. Good. You know, the night that Russ died, um, we got a call about two hours later. And I remember hanging up and thinking, well, we're going to be going to Pittsburgh. Not because I thought Ron would do a better job than Russ, but Ron loved Russ and Norma. And he considered them an elder brother and sister in the Lord. And I just couldn't imagine that we weren't going to come. Well, we didn't come for two years. And thank God we didn't come because although Ron was awesome, he was not the business person that Olene was. And Olene got us through some hard yeah, times back then. Times, you know, yeah. and so we, when we got to come, it was the perfect timing because God's never late, he's always on time. And uh, we were thrilled to be back here. Uh, but you want to know about Ron going home to heaven. And Ron, if he had gone home any faster, he would have been Enoch too. Yeah. You know what, Ron will be in heaven nine years in June. It's coming wow. up right around wow. the corner. And Ron had had a physical two days before he went to heaven. And the doctor said, Ron, you're like a guy 20 years younger than you. You have no heart disease, no diabetes, no hardening of the arteries. You have a little high blood pressure, but you're responding to meds really well. So go home and work for Jesus for 20 more years. So that was Tuesday. And then on Thursday, Ron taped, well, on Wednesday, he taped 12 quick study shows. And I on remember. Thursday, he taped yeah. nine. Then he went to the car place and got our car service. Then we went and threw a birthday party for his 94-year-old mom, and it, just for a couple hours. And we all got home about eight. And he looked at me and said, baby doll, something's not right. And I went over, and he wasn't pointing at his chest. He was pointing like up here. And, he, and I said, are you dizzy? No. Are you in any pain? No. Do you have a headache? No. I said, what's happening? He said, I don't know, baby, but something's not right. So I dialed 911, put the phone in front of him like that. He was at the kitchen table. I put my arms on his shoulder. I said, we need an ambulance. And he said, what are you doing? I said, we need an ambulance because something's happening and we don't know. And she said, well, what's his name? So I did that. And she said, what's his birthday? And Ron said, April 23rd. And as he said that, he turned his head to the right and he stood yeah. straight up and took a step away from the table. Now, I was going with him because I had my hands on his shoulders. And I remember thinking, always the wife, I was going to say, where are you going? You're talking to her. Finish telling her your birth date. And I looked, and Ron was gone. Ron was with Jesus. Wow. It was, and and wow. I sat him back down on the chair, and our 14-year-old son, Frankie, had just come around the corner because they were going to watch a ball game together. And uh, it was amazing that in just a minute and a half, two minutes, the things that go through your head. But right. God was right there because what went through my head is I was doing CPR because the operator said, do you know how to do CPR? And I said, yes. Frankie helped his, picked up Ron. Frankie's a big guy, six foot six. He picked up his daddy and put him on the floor for me to start CPR. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, I have to stay calm as a mom so I don't scare Frankie. Right, right, right. And in case Ron really isn't with the Lord, he's just passed out, I don't want to scare him because <laughs> I'm a wife, I want to take care of him too. And but Rod had preached a sermon called the 11 Beatitudes. He went through all 10 and he'd say, but there's one more. And he said, the 11th Beatitude is blessed will be the person who doesn't question how God runs his business. Oh, wow. And while I was doing CPR, I'm thinking, I'm not questioning how I, you're running your business. Wow. Our days are numbered of you. And boy, I hope this isn't the day you took him home. Mm. But if this was Ron's day, I know that I'll throw our family under the shelter of the Almighty and that wow. you will be our provider and our protector and that you will comfort us in this time of loss. And, you know, it, it, I mean, it all was just going on like in my head, it was amazing. And so they came and they took Ron to the hospital and a couple hours later, you know, I, I was back home and I was walking up and down the driveway, pitch black outside, my arms were raised crying and I'm saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I stopped and I looked up at the sky and I said, what am I thanking you for? You just took the love of my life home. Like, what am I thanking you for? And then I thought, well, what am I thanking you for? I'm thanking you that he was crazy about you yeah. and he was crazy about me yeah. and he was crazy about our kids and we got to serve you together. And we had, sure. you know, I was crazy about Ron, but I really liked him too. We just, we were both really in love and really he was my best friend right. and was the best for me, you know, yeah. wasn't perfect, but he was perfect for me. And I was so grateful mm -hmm. that I had that. And I knew that came from the Lord. Well, that is something that was so inspiring to my husband and I, because we got to be on Valentine's <laughs> programs with you, you know, and you guys, you had such a great love story. Yeah. You have still yeah, such a great love story. 
how do you, how do you transition mm, through easily. grief? And, and I know <laughs> so easily. many have lost, no. you know, loved ones. How do you how do you navigate as a widow, where Jesus really becomes your? How important is Jesus in your life? Who now? is my husband? Jesus or God? I'm never sure which one of them. <laughs> you know, here here's what I'll tell you, Amy. I knew that if I served out of my hurt, mm -hmm. I'd get well. I knew oh, that wow. the Lord let us go through things so that we could learn to serve him out of those things. I knew that he wasn't gonna absolve me from grief. He wasn't gonna say, Kathy, you're really a good girl. And you know, you've gone through some hard times, so I'm gonna let you get through this. He, I knew we lived in a fallen world and I was gonna have to experience grief and get my children through that, the loss of their dad. But I remember saying to the Lord, and I'm you're gonna think I'm awful here, guys. I said, you're gonna be my husband. I don't want you, I want Ron. You know, I yeah, want Ron. Right. Yeah. But, yes. but if Ron can't be here, and he can't, because I'm not questioning how you're running your business, I'll take you because you'll be my husband and their dad, and you will be my shield and my defender and my provider and my protector and my comfort and my companion. And then I thought, you know what? If this is true, and I believe God's word is true, I am going to rely on that daily. Now, I, you know, we're not to plan because the Lord, you know, plan, he puts our steps in action, but I'm a planner. I like to know ahead of time what's coming. But when Ron died, I couldn't face more than about 24 hours at one time. I didn't really want to know what was coming. I didn't want to know if I was going to hurt worse the next day or if I wasn't going to be able to pay a bill the next week or if my children were going to fall apart. I didn't want to know that ahead of time. So I said, Lord, I don't know what my daily bread is. You will meet my, whatever that is that I need daily, good, you will bring. Yes. Oh, so man. my yes. job was to accept that the Lord would meet me where I was and provide my daily bread. And you know what, sometimes that was just the deer running in my backyard because that refreshed me. Sometimes it was a call from somebody that said something nice about Ron because I really wanted to talk about him and I wanted people to talk about him. Sometimes it was just a happy day with the kids where they weren't fighting and crying and mourning and we were getting along. Uh, some days it was a check in the mail. You know, there were miraculous wow. things going on really that first season, and I was in awe of that. I thought, you know, I can't possibly be the only widow experiencing this, I can't be. But I wanted to shout this to widows. I wanted to say, look, miss them, cry over them, grieve, we're gonna get there, I'll hold you, I'll hug you, bring pictures, we can talk about them, but don't miss this opportunity to let the Lord step in here and meet your needs. Don't miss this, because it was awesome. You know, yeah. Ron, Ron was such an important person in my life. He was uh, an encourager. He was. Always. He had a, you know, Ron never walked quietly into a room. It was big, you know, big entrance all the time. And he'd, be, he'd see me off and he'd go, I love you, brother. You know, he'd say things like that. That was important. So nine years on now, Kathy. I, I, I put up a YouTube of Ron the other day. It was his birthday and I wanted to hear his voice. And I listened to it and I thought, thank you, Father, that you gifted this man that you called and anointed him and that the words he speaks even now through this YouTube video drew me to the father. I mean, it was nice to see my husband, but it reminded me again who Jesus was and who I was in Jesus. You know, who I am and whose I am. That's so important to remember. You know, do I miss Ron every day? I miss Ron. You know, I had exceptional guys. There will not be another Ron Henry for me. You know, and people will say, well, don't you want to remarry? I love my one son said, well, mom, I think you're just a little too old. If I'd been a year or two younger, I would have had a chance. But you know what? I, you know, I'm very, I'm content where I am. And isn't it good to be content where you are yes. with what the Lord brings to you, yeah. what he provides for you. But Ron was an encourager. There, there is the first Christmas I was boo hoo hooing to the Lord. I know you're more important than Ron, but, but he encouraged me. And in my heart, I heard, well, Kathy, I'm here to encourage you every day through the Holy Spirit and my word. And then I said, yeah, but he, you know, he loved me. And I heard, well, I gave my life for you. And then I said, but he prayed for me. And he said, and I pray for you to the Father without ceasing, Kathy. Wow, that is so good. So God is real, faithful. Tom, and faithful. Amen. Well, we're going to have you join us as we pray at the, at the end of the program. Okay. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Thanks Thank for you. letting me. Oh, yeah. so, so good. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the, the Lord delivers us out of them all. I love what you said, just the daily bread. Mm -hmm. God wants to give you mm -hmm. daily bread. Give us a call at 888-665-4483. Maybe you're a new widow. Maybe you're mm -hmm. struggling. Maybe you need prayer. And I know for a fact 
that the Holy Spirit is going to help you. He's going to come alongside of you. You might not think that you're going to make it, but I'm telling you, you can make it. You will make it. And That's Kathy, right. thank you for such being a beautiful, bright light well, always right. for Amen. many, many years. Amen.